Hello, this talk is about a new feature arriving to Dynea 4.7, that is the ability to estimate the parameters of a DSG model with either the generalized method of moments or with the simulated method of moments. Now let me be clear about this. This is not about estimating individual model equations by a method of moments, so what is usually referred to as single equations estimations, but to really fully exploit the cross equation restrictions based on the approximated policy function of the model. So basically using the same solution methods as we already do for estimating the parameters with either maximum likelihood or Bayesian MCMC methods. That is, we solve the model with perturbation techniques and use the underlying decision rules to compute the moments either via simulation or using the state space form, we can then compute uh, these moments analytically in closed form. If we use simulations to compute the model moments, and then estimate the parameters based on this, then this is called the simulated method of moments, which can be done to any order of approximation in Dynea. If we compute the model moments analytically and then estimate the models based on this, then this is called generalized method of moments, which can be done up to a third order perturbation approximation. However, you need to set the pruning option because the computations are based on the pruned state space system. Uh, the toolbox is inspired and based on replication codes by uh, Martin Andreassen, Jesus Fernandez Villaverde and Rubio Ramirez, by Benjamin Born and Johannes Pfeiffer and by myself. Um, the toolbox is developed and maintained by the Denaire team of course and currently Johannes and I are responsible for the development so please feel free to reach out to us. Now before we talk about estimation let me give you a quick overview how Denaire computes moments. So after pre-processing your mode file, the framework Dynair works in is one where you only have one lead and one lag on the endogenous variables y and only current exogenous variables u and a bunch of parameters theta. So f are your model equations and we're considering the stochastic model and x are your state variables. Now the solution to this stochastic framework is called a policy function g. So given the previous state of the economy and observing current shocks, the policy functions gives you the optimal behavior of agents that maximizes their objectives. However, this policy function or decision rule is usually unknown and we need to approximate it. And the most used method for this is called perturbation. And here the idea is to compute tail approximations of G around the non-stochastic steady state. Uh, that is, we introduce a perturbation parameter, sigma, which is zero at the non-stochastic steady state. And so we get an appro approximated decision rule that looks like this here. So here are the first order terms, here are the second order terms, and maybe you also get the third, third order terms, fourth order terms, etc. And how do you compute these coefficient matrices, this gx, gx, gxx, gxu, guu, etc. So you get these by computing Taylor approximations of your model equations, evaluate these at the non-stochastic steady state, manipulate these equations, and then you are able to infer those gx, gu, and so on coefficient matrices. And this is automatically done by Dynair for you for any order of approximation. But typically we look at orders one, two, and three. This was mo what most people focus on. Now, how can you compute unconditional moments? So, I mean the theoretical mean, the variance, the covariance between variables, autocovariances, maybe skewness, maybe kurtosis. And there are basically two approaches you can follow. First, you have the decision rule. So, simply draw a large number of shocks and simulate your data and then compute the empirical moments on that. And we know, given uh, a law of large numbers, those empirical moments will convert to the theoretical moments. Or you can use the state space representation of the decision rules to actually compute these in closed form analytically. And let me show you how this works. So let's fir first focus on the first order approximation, which is basically a linear state space system with Gaussian innovations. This is the best of all worlds, right? We know how to compute moments, the likelihood and everything. Okay, but all the information that we can use for estimation is contained in the first two moments 
only. Now I'm concerned about computing unconditional moments. Well, this can be computed in closed form, right? The first moment, the mean, is equal to my steady state. The covariance matrix of all our endogenous variables y is a linear function of the covariance matrix of the state variables plus the covariance of the shocks. Now the covariance matrix of the states is given by a so-called Lyapunov equation or a Sylvester equation. And this can be solved easily either using uh, a Kronecker product for small systems, this is uh, feasible, or with a very efficient and accurate algorithm for solving those Lyapunov equations, which we do by default in Dynair. Once you have those objects, it is very straightforward to compute, say, out covariances or any other unconditional moment like skewness or kurtosis in closed form. But again, in a linear Gaussian state space system, all the information is contained in the first two moments only. Now, what about higher order approximations? Now, let's have a look at a univariate example, okay? Even though we work with multi equations in Dynair, but let's focus here really on just one equation. Okay, let's have a look how this law of motion looks at second order. So, this will be something like this. I have dropped the one half for notational reasons here. Now, note that at first order, we would only have this term and this term, and if gx is less than one, then that system would be stable at first order. Also, at first order, there is a unique fixed point, our steady state, which is here given by x equals zero. But at second order, we get another fixed point, and this introduces another difficulty. So once there is a shock such that we pass this, that second fixed point, we don't return to our steady state and the system explodes. So even the system is stable at first order, due to those spurious fixed points at higher orders, the system may, may become unstable, um, because I'm taking the square um, of those deviations and making them even larger. And this implies that our model is neither stationary nor ergodic anymore, and for estimation purposes this is very hard to tackle. And also from an econo economic point of view, this is most likely not the model class we want to analyze. So the literature has proposed several solutions to these problems, and one is called pruning. And the basic idea of pruning is to leave out terms that have a higher order effect than the approximation order. And the literature here has shown that the prune state space system is stationary and ergodic. And even though this approach seems quite mechanic at first glance uh, or ad hoc, it can be derived as a valid approximation of the policy functions, not with respect to the state variables, but with respect to the perturbation parameter. And I've given you some reference here if, you aren't, if you're interested in the theory behind this. Now let me show you the mechanics, uh, how this works for our univariate example. So let us artificially decompose this x into first order effects and second order effects. Now, given second order law of motion, we get this equation over here. Now note that xf is a first order effect. This is a second order effect. Okay, so this is a second order effect. This is actually here a third order effect, the product. And this squared is actually a fourth order effect. And pruning means let us cut terms that contain this xf times xs and this xs squared. And then we get the law of motions for first order effects and the law of motion for second order effects. And as we have the squared term over here, we also, we also get the law of motion for second uh, for xf squared. Now those three equations, let's put them in a matrix. Okay, so the first row is my xf, the second row is my xs, and the third row is my xf squared. And notice that we have the vector of endogenous variables at time t, let's call this zt, here we have the same vector at time t minus one. We have a constant coefficient matrix, let's call this A, plus we have a vector of innovations of exogenous variables of shocks, let's call this xi, and another matrix, a con another constant matrix B. Now this is a linear state space system. Now is it stable? Well, we have to look at the matrix A and 
we know that if the eigenvalues of this matrix A lie inside the unit circle, then this is a stable system. Uh, having this structure here, we can actually see that this all depends on the value of gx. So, and gx is given from the first order approximation, stable, okay? So if the first order approximation is stable, then so is also the second order pruned state space system. Now one little problem, this vector of innovations here doesn't have a mean of zero, okay? Because the expectation of ut squared is actually um, its variance. But we can, act, we can simply add and subtract this variance and then we get a mean zero vector here. Have a look at this vector. Even though u is Gaussian, is normally distributed, this vector xi is not. Okay, we have a square of the normal distribution here. And in xf, there's also the norm, it's normally distributed, and so is u, so we get uh, some mixture here. And this means the moments of our variables change at higher order in this pruned state space system. And we can use actually even higher order statistics to base our estimations upon. So we are not limited by the fact that all information is based in the first two moments only, but going to higher order approximations, co computing the pruned state space system, the first and the second moment will already change, but we can also get more restrictions, more information for estimation from even higher order statistics. Now, one can show that given such an extended vector z and an extended vector of innovations xi, the pruned perturbation solution of a DSG model can always be rewritten as a linear time invariant state space system for any order of approximation. And similar to the first order approximation to the linear Gaussian state space system we saw that, we saw there, we can compute unconditional moments in the system in closed form, analytically. Yeah, yes, by solving again those Lyapunov equations or generalized Sylvester equations uh, if we consider even higher order statistics. It is very tedious, but we do this in Dynea for approximations orders two and three. So we provide those closed forms for you. Now, let's talk about how we can use these moments to estimate our model parameters. Now think about what you do when you calibrate a model. You basically use some value for say the depreciation rate to target the long run ratio of investment and capital or you calibrate the elasticity alpha of a Cobb-Douglas uh, production function by targeting uh, a certain long run average, um, say one minus labor income over GDP. Now you try one alpha, but you find that this might be too far away from what you see in data. Then you try another alpha and this might be closer to your target. Then you do another one and this is farther away. So basically you are already estimating. Okay, your objective is to minimize a distance from the model moments to the data moments. Long run averages are most of the times measured by the mean. Now, similar to say the linear regression where we minimize squared residuals, we can try to minimize the squared distance here. So basically I don't care whether I am above or below my target. Now, how do you compute the model moments? Well, if you do this by simulation and then minimize your objective, then this is called the simulated method of moments. If you do this analytically and then minimize your objective, then this is called the generalized method of moments. Now let's first have a look at the simulated method of moments, SMM. Um, this exposition here follows a 2007 JDC paper by Ruge Musia if you want to have more information on that. Now let's MT denote the vector of empirical observations on variables whose moments you are interested in. So the mean of output, or the mean of consumption, the first output covariance, or the third product moment. Now MI of theta denotes the counterpart to that moment in your model. And you compute that, that model moment by using an artificial data set generated by your DSG model, generated by your decision function, generated by your policy function, using some value for your parameters theta. Now if you have more moments than parameters, you have the option to decide which moments are more important to you. 
And you do that by specifying a weighting matrix W here. If you don't care, simply use the identity matrix, but usually you want those very informative moments to get a higher weight than those uninformative moments. Now T denotes the sample size and you simulate not only T observations, but a multiple tau of that. And maybe even consider a burn-in phase. So if your sample size is 100, you simulate say 20 times 100 observations, throw out the first 100 and then compute the empirical mean, the empirical variance, the empirical covariance, the empirical outer covariance on that data set. And this is then an estimate for the model moment. And you compare that to what you see in your data. And this comparison is the so-called moments distance. This is the distance between the model moments and your data moments. So these are the data moments and your model moments. And this I denoted here with G. And this depends on the value of theta because your model moments depend on theta. Now the simulate method of moments estimator is that value that minimizes the quadratic distance. And again, if you have more moments than parameters, you, you can give a certain weight to some moment conditions here. Now actually any weighting matrix will produce a consistent and asymptotically normal SMM estimator, but there is an optimal one that gives you the most efficient estimator in the class of all asymptotically normal estimators. Um, it will basically have the smallest possible variance. And there are ways to compute this optimal weighting matrix by doing a simulated method of moments estimation in several stages. So first, for instance, you consider the identity matrix as the weighting matrix to get a first estimate theta SM at the first stage. This estimate is consistent, okay? And then you use this consistent estimate to compute the optimal weighting matrix, and then you use that optimal weighting matrix to minimize your moments distance again. And this you can do with Dynair's new toolbox. Now W is computed by using a new REST estimator with a Bartlett kernel and this matrix D here, this is the derivative of your model moments with respect to the parameters. And this is important for computing the standard errors. And actually a regularity condition of the asymptotic theory of the simulated method of moments requires you that your parameters are globally and locally identified. Now global identification in these G models is very hard to establish and actually infeasible here, but local identification you can establish that easily with the identification toolbox, which basically checks whether this matrix is full rank and you need that for doing a simulate method of moments estimation. Now the expectation is approximated by averaging over the simulated data points. And for simulated method of moments, these derivatives here are computed numerically. Now let's have a look at the generalized method of moments, GMM. Now the difference to the simulated method of moments is that we now have the unconditional moments in closed form. We can use the prune state space system up to the third order in Dynair for the, to compute these analytically. The rest is the same, we don't, but we don't do any simulations here. Okay, now the moments distance is now between your data moments and those theoretical ones. And looking at the asymptotic distribution here, the difference between simulated method of moments and generalized method of moments is there was a one plus one over tau term in front of this matrix. And basically this is a measure of the increase in sample uncertainty due to the use of simulations to compute the population moments instead of the theoretical ones. But this term quickly decreases as tau increases. So if you set tau say to 20, um, they are more or less the same. Now the weighting matrix is computed using a new REST estimator with a Bartlett kernel. To get the optimal one, we do need a first state consistent estimate use this to compute the optimal weighting matrix. And good practice is actually to use the variance of the data moments on the diagonal of the first stage weighting matrix. And this is all done automatically in the toolbox. You need, however, to decide which weighting matrix you want in which stage. This D matrix, again, must be full rank. So a regularity condition for the asymptotic normal distribution is global and local identification. 
global identification is infeasible to check, but local one, we have the identification toolbox for this. And this D matrix, again, is required to compute standard errors of your estimates. For GMM, we have that estimate in closed form. We can compute this even analytically. And this is sometimes useful. So your standard error estimates are not sensitive to the numerical differentiation step that you chose. Or if you are very close to the boundary of the determinacy or stability region, um, you can't really use numerical differentiation, but analytical one is still going, going to work. Um, you can use this as input to a gradient-based minimizer, and this will, on the one hand, require fewer iterations in your minimization, but it will most likely take a little longer. So I guess there are trade-offs everywhere. Now, when you have more moments than parameters, you can actually test the model and the choice of your moments by using Hansen's over-identification tests. And we do this automatically in Dynair. Now, some remarks. How does this compare to full information methods? Well, the question here is, um, do we really think that our model represents the true data generating process? And with full information methods, well, actually we do so because we assume the complete distribution. With those limited information methods like GMM or SMM, we don't do that, but we focus on certain parts of the data generating process. Of course, we can fix this problem by becoming Bayesians and adding additional information via um, priors to the estimation, uh, but we can also do this with limited information techniques. Now, what about the efficiency of the estimates, the, the precision? Um, and of course, with full information methods, the precision is better because we're considering the whole distributions. The efficiency of those method of moments estimates depends highly on which moments you include. Um, and actually we do have other toolboxes like the Dynair sensitivity toolbox that can help you, guide you uh, to get an idea which variables are most important for which parameters. So you should check this out as well. Often, if you do a method of moments estimation, you find that your global minimum is in, in the region of the parameter space that typically one would consider unlikely. So there's a dilemma of absurd parameters estimates. So your uh, discount factor is uh, larger than one or something like that. Now, if you have a look at the region, you often find local minima that are in more plausible regions. And those are often characterized by just slightly worse values for the objective function. And an idea is, okay, now let's include some prior knowledge as an additional moment restrictions. So this is very similar to adding priors to the likelihood and doing a Bayesian MCMC method, okay? I'm trying to penalize the optimization such that I don't get those absurd parameter estimates. And you can do this by including additional moment restrictions. So say you have prior knowledge, okay, you include this as additional moment restrictions and you weigh this by the prior precision. Now this leads of course to a loss in efficiency, but often it delivers very good results. Now, how do we tackle all this in Dynair's new toolbox? First of all, there is a new interface. You have a new block called matched moments. There you have to define which moments you want to consider. And then there's a new command called method of moments, which performs either the GMM or SMM estimation. We reuse, um, of course, our interface. You declare with var ops the observable variables and you declare the parameters you want to estimate in an estimated params block. And similar to full information estimation methods, you can either use initial values or you can specify the whole prior to the penalized estimation. Now, what about this matched moments block? So say you want to consider the mean of consumption of output, then the variance of consumption, the covariance between output and consumption, the first output covariance, the second output covariance of consumption, and the output covariance of consumption and output at lag three. And we have a syntax for this. It's called in the matched moments block. That is, you have to write in your mode file, matched moments, semicolon, so this will correspond to the mean of 
consumption, the mean of output. This is the variance, this is the covariance, this is the first lag, the second lag, and this is the outer covariance of consumption and output at third lag order. Okay, so this is the new syntax that where you can tell which moments you want to do. Now, you run the estimation with the method of moments function. And similar to the estimation function, there are a bunch of options. Some are necessary, others are optionally. Now, two are necessary which method you want to do. And right now, we support GMM or SMM. And you need to provide a data file. Okay, very similar to what you already do with estimation. Now, then there are some options for both GMM and SMM. Um, first, which order you want to do the estimation. So this is the perturbation approximation order. For GMM, we support only up to three. For SMM, you can do any order. With penalized estimate, you include the prior mean as additional moment restrictions and use the prior precision as a weight. The pruning option, you can turn this on for SMM. For GMM, this is done automatically. Verbose gives you some intermediate results. Then you choose, very importantly, um, which weighting matrix you want to do. And here you even declare how many stages you want to do. Uh, by default, we first use the diagonal of the data moments. And then at the second stage, we compute the optimal matrix. Now you can also choose to do the identity matrix or provide your own weighting matrix. You can scale the weighting matrix, which uh, might be useful for numerical reasons. And you can choose the step size to compute standard errors if you're doing numerical differentiation. Now, some options for the simulated method of moments, how many burn-in periods you want to do, if you want to trim the shocks in the simulation to plus minus two times the standard deviation, which seat you going to set because we need to have always the same shocks in the simulation and how this tau I was talking about this is the simulation multiple you should probably choose a value of say 20 or something like that now for GMM there's just one specific option if you want to compute the standard errors using analytic derivatives and then there are some general options where you want to store your results. Um, if you don't want to display or gra um, if you don't want to display something, um, if you want to plot the priors, um, if you want latex capability. So this is very similar to what we do with our other toolboxes. Then there are some data options. What is your first observation if your data is already in logs? how many observations you want to consider, if you're using Excel and which sheet we find the data and the range of the data. So these are exactly the same options as we do with estimation. Some options you can change for optimization purposes. Okay, which optimizer you want to do is specified by mode compute. At each stage, you can even use several optimizers sequentially. First, you might want to do Opt mode compute three, and then you want to do um, a new optimizer LSQN on LIN, uh, which is mode compute 13. Okay, and you can even provide four more. At each stage of the estimation, it will do five optimizations, one after the other. You can silence the optimizer by this option. Um, and depending on the optimizer, you can set some other values using this optim structure. So some commonly used options here, I've um, given you some examples, how many iterations, what is the tolerance level. So if you have access to MATLAB's parallel toolbox, you can use some optimizers in parallel when they compute the gradient, um, etc. There, are, There are also some numerical algorithms options that you can use. So which perturbation algorithm you're using, uh, which tolerance levels. If you don't know anyth anything about this, then simply keep the defaults. Okay, the same for solving those Lyapunov equations or those Celeste equations. If you don't know what you're doing, those defaults are just fine. Um, a very important um, options you might want to check out is mode check. This is the same as with our estimation command. 
uh, you will get the target function plotted at the values around the computed minimum for each estimated parameter in turn so you can see if something went wrong with your optimization. Okay, now let me give you two examples, one for SMM and one for GMM. So let's consider the baseline RVC model, which is also used in the replication files of uh, Martin Andreasen and co-authors paper here. Okay, so we have a, a common.inc file where we declare variables, parameters, we calibrate the model, um, compute the steady state, we use a helper file for labor, and then let's first do the simulated method of moments. Okay, I'm including the model equations, this common file, there's only one chalk, and I want to focus my estimation on these three variables. Um, I want to estimate structural parameters, but also the standard error of my shock. And I'm using as initial value the calibrated values. Now, the method of moments starts with a matched moments block. Remember, you have declared var ops. So remember, you have to declare var ops consumption, investment, and labor. So these are the variables you can use in the matched moments block. Okay, I'm, I'm focusing on the mean of these three variables. I'm computing the variance, the covariance between these variance, again, the variance, covariance, covariance, the first auto covariances of those three variables, and the third auto covariances, and the fifth lag of the auto covariances. Then you run method of moments, and you write all the options that you want to do. You can do this like I did in new lines. Um, the preprocessor stops evaluating options when it finds the close parentheses and the semicolon. Okay, and I've put in this mode file all the options that you currently can set. Which ones do you need? You need to select which method you're using, so GMM or SMM. What is your data file? And then there are some options for both GMM and SMM. I'm doing a order equals two right now. Then the weighting matrix. So I'm using first the diagonal of the, using the data moments as weighting matrix then to compute a first stage estimate. Then using this first stage, stage estimate, I'm computing the optimal weighting matrix and redoing the estimation in the second stage using the optimal weighting matrix. Uh, I could also put in more stages, maybe for instance, again, the diagonal, then it would use the diagonal of the optimal weighting matrix. Sometimes you need to set this uh, scaling factor. What is the step size for numerical computation of standard errors? For SMM, it's always important to have a look at this tau that I talked about in the presentation. Five is probably not large enough. Um, and then there are some general options. Uh, let's have some latex capabilities here um, using all observations, so I don't need to put in any options here. And I'm using this uh, new optimizer that we have because this is really an optimizer for minimizing squared residuals. So this is really useful in this case. And I'm, I'm not only doing one optimization here, but also a second one. Uh, so maybe let me first do the CS minwell minimization and then run this LSQN on lin. And I'm setting some some options here as well. Okay. And I always like to do the mode check plots. So you will need Dynair 4.7 for this. So either the unstable version or hopefully soon this new stable 4.7 version. Okay. Now let's have a look at the mode check plots, whether or not we found the minimum, this looks quite well. Okay, so those dots are of course the determinacy or stability region. Um, this looks okay. So this is very similar to the mode check command of estimation. Now let's go into the console what happened. We start with the method of moments. We first compute data moments and some checks are performed. Um, and then we do simulated method of moments with uncentered moments. If you want to center your moments, you set the pre-filter option to one. First, I'm doing the CS minwell, then I'm doing the LSQN on lin optimizer. 
we use perturbation order equals two. The standard errors are computed with numerical derivatives. Um, have I have 18 moments and I have seven parameters. Now I'm doing a first stage estimation where we use the diagonal of the optimal weighting matrix, but use the data moments as initial estimate of model moments. Now CS Minwell doesn't know the tall x option, but this is then CS Minwell it had problems to do anything here. Um, but then LSKN on Lin is very powerful because it really does minimization of squared residuals, okay? And it stopped and we get the stage one uh, value of the minimized moment distance objective function, which is rather high. So we compute the standard errors at this stage. So these are the estimate and standard error of the first stage estimate. Now we're using the optimal weighting matrix. So there is a Bartlett kernel with 20 legs and using now the previous stage estimate of our model moments. So again, CS Minwell seems to struggle in this case, but the LSKN on Lin is able to find the local minimum here. And this value is very close to zero. Then we compute with numer using numerical differentiations the standard deviations of our structural parameters and of the standard error of the shock. You get a, val um, a value of the J statistic. Okay, so the moments I've chosen are not rejected. Um, that's fine. And you get an overview how well you're matching the moments. So that in data we see that the mean of C is this value over here in the model we have this value, okay? So we are very close. All right, and this completes the simulated method of moments estimation. Let's do the same with GMM, okay? The same model, um, the same matched moments, um, also using diagonal and optimal here. All right also use mode compute 4 and 13 all right and mode check plots okay okay and this is much quicker than the simulated method of moments the mode check plots look fine so here it will tell you that this works only with pruning so this automatically sets the pruning option again we're computing data moments um, it gives you an overview of the options chosen. Then I'm using the estimation at stage one. Uh, here CS Minwell works um, somewhat, but LSKN QN on Lin is actually a much better optimizer in this case. I get this value at the first stage for my objective function, compute the standard errors at the first stage, and at second stage we then use the optimal weighting matrix to get this value of the minimized uh, moments distance objective function. Uh, no, this is uh, the first iteration, sorry. This is the this value of the minimized moment distance objective functions, which is very low. Okay, the standard errors look also quite well. And this gives you again an overview of data moments compared to model moments. And this looks quite okay. So this is really a good value here. Of course I'm using simulated data so this is not surprising. Good. All right.